So I have a couple days to spend in Yellowstone. After two straight days of riding, it's a welcome relief to have something of a base camp where I'll be able to lay my head for the next few nights. Alright, we're gonna give this microphone and GoPro thing a shot. Uh, here, let's try this. Beep! Alright, I'm at Fisherman's Bridge over the Yellowstone River here. So uh, right behind me that I just left was a place where I can um, get gasoline and food is like a general store. It's basically like a small town here. Um, and they also have cell service. Verizon is number one. Pretty, pretty damn certain. So um, I gave a call. I got the number for a, a customer service line and then they told me that there is availability at a couple tent only sites which obviously don't have their own, uh, no, no dump sites, no RVs, no glamping. So, and they're first come, first serve as well. So that's what I'm going to go for. So right now what I'm doing is just making my way through the park. I'm going to go to the Indian Creek campsite, which is south of the Mammoth Springs. Because the two big things I wanted to hit up were the Mammoth Springs. And so the reason I made sure that all my, uh, squeeze it in here, the reason I made sure all my stuff was good to go is I have no idea if I'm going to end up running into wildlife. So far I've been doing a good job at watching my gas tank and making sure I have things to eat along the way. I have a habit of forgetting to eat sometimes when I'm biking long distance like this. I'll pass by a small town and realize that I won't see another restaurant for 45 minutes or longer. You just put it out of your mind. I'm not expending much energy and I'm not eating much either. It's this strange form of road hibernation. At the last general store I had a cliff bar and an apple which is more than enough energy to keep me going. The biggest hazard to me out here isn't the wildlife. It's the big mechanical machines around me being operated by skittish, easily distracted animals called tourists. These cagers would slam on their brakes at every opportunity to snap a photo, regardless of the speed limit or who was around them. I picture a spouse slapping their loved one in the arm, telling them to stop, stop, as they spot a bison grazing on a hill along the road. To humor them, they'll slam on their brakes with no regard to the safety of those around them. Little old me could be following behind a glamper mobile at 45 miles per hour when they just decide to completely cease all forward motion with no warning. As long as I keep my distance, it'll keep the driver from hearing a loud clunk coming from the back of his rental as he stops to take a picture of some bird he'll end up seeing again in a nearby parking lot. photos, the correct thing to do is to park your vehicle in a turnout. It's a nice, wide-open platform of asphalt that gets your car out of the road. Many tourists will ignore these and pull over in between these turnouts. This is wrong. The weight of the vehicle can stress the asphalt on the edges, leading to more calls for maintenance over time, and it also slows down traffic and raises the risk of accidents. Just some tips for when you decide to plan your visit to Yellowstone. I know all the tips I'm throwing out here in this episode might make me seem all high and mighty, so here's me fucking up to bring my ego back down to earth.
Whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus.